Hello everyone and welcome back to Learn Python in 2023 by Coding with Jan. Today we'll be diving into our second lesson where we'll be creating a currency converter using mathematical operators and dictionaries. So buckle up because this is going to be fun. fun. Before we start, it's important to mention that you should already be familiar with the concepts of variables, data types, input and output in Python. If you're not, I highly recommend you watch my first part on Python again. Let's open up PyCharm CE which will be our idea for today's tutorial. We'll create a new project, give it its name and check the Python path here. Then we press create at the bottom right. Now that our environment is set up, let's start coding. First we'll need to delete the default code. Then we'll start by creating a dictionary to define the currency conversion rates. The dictionary will consist of the currency names as keys and their corresponding exchange rates as values. In this tutorial we'll be using four currencies, USD as the default, Euro, British Pounds and Indian Rupee. To create the dictionary we'll give it its name first, in this case conversion rates. Then we'll add the currency names as their keys and the exchange rates as values. For example, the exchange rate for USD will be 1. Now let's continue with all the others. Once the conversion rates are done, we need to figure out how to get the user input. Next, we'll get the input amount, the initial currency and the target currency. For the input amount, we'll use a float data type. A float is a type of numerical data in programming that can store decimal values. Maybe you already noticed by now that you've already been using floats like here. So the variable name is amount and the data type is as mentioned a float. Inside of the float, we need to put the input which in this case will be enter the amount. We also need a from currency and a to currency variable which both contains inputs. These variables however will not be floats but strings. So it's a from currency equals input enter the source currency and then a to currency that will be input enter the target currency pro tip to ensure that the user's input is always matched with the dictionary entries we can add the dot upper method to each of our string inputs this is especially useful because the currency names in the dictionaries are all in uppercase. By converting the user's input to uppercase, we can guarantee that the correct exchange rate is retrieved from the dictionary, even if the user types the currency name in lowercase. Now let's move on to the math part of the code. Here's the code we need. The initial amount line calculates the equivalent amount in the target currency based on the conversion rate. It takes the input amount and multiplies it with the conversion rate of the target currency. Then the converted amount line calculates the equivalent amount in the source currency based on the conversion rate. It takes the initial amount in the target currency and divides it by the conversion rate of the source currency. This gives the final equivalent amount in the source currency. If you don't quite understand yet what this code does, you'll see it in just a second. Pro tip, because we can't actually pay something in like $0.00123, we need some kind of rounding. In order to round, we need to change the values of the converted amount to converted amount rounding. Inside of the brackets, we need to add the value that should be rounded and then behind a comma, we need to add the amount of decimals that we want to round. In this case, it's two. Finally, we'll print out the result for the user to see. This way, the user can see the converted amount. All we have to do is to add one print statement that contains f string. The f string allows us to add variables by putting them inside curly bracket. So let's go ahead and add all the variables. This is the F string. And now let's run it. Perfect. If anything is still unclear or doesn't work, just let me know in the comments below. Also, for the best learning experience, I would recommend you recode the project on your own while maybe adding a few things here and there. See you in the next video. Goodbye.